SEMA. We're SEMA. back from SEMA. <laughs> it's been a long Ooh. week. Man, it's been a rough week. It's been a rough week. Well, SEMA was rough. So we had Atlanta. Then we had like a few days off. Then we had SEMA. And then we come back from SEMA. We're sick. Yes, we got sick at SEMA. And other cats <laughs> got sick yeah. too. All the touching, yeah. head shaking. So before Atlanta, we had work, like booked out. We had Atlanta, came back, booked out. SEMA, come back, booked out. So it's, and we don't do a lot of detailing, but to be this booked out this time of year, like this is our busy season for, for us traditionally. Um, we're not taking on a lot of work. We're not doing a lot of detailing uh, opposed to previous years. But man, it's rough when you're sick too because these people have been waiting you know, wait, been waiting months to get their cars done or we even had one client who needed a boat done. We normally maintenance, he forgot to put the cover on it so we had to kind of squeeze him in mm. and we're not just gonna say no to a big payday like that. It's like, okay, well, we're both feeling a little bit under the weather, but uh, man, SEMA got the best of everybody. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there that are, uh, man, it, it, it beat us up. Uh, so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about-, about SEMA recap, we're back. Our, yeah. yeah, we're talking about our whole experience at SEMA. Everybody's perspective is a little bit different with SEMA. So uh, what, were, what were your initial thoughts of SEMA? Um, initially, man, uh, I had anxiety. I got anxiety from, from not knowing what was going to happen, not knowing what to expect, and also uh, just uh, not being able to see everything. I, I was getting anxiety, oh, knowing, yeah. knowing I wasn't going to have enough time, oh, especially yeah. see how big it was, to how, how truly big it, the whole thing is. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, I was I was getting a little. I wasn't even nervous about that to be honest, because uh, I, I knew I knew from the get go there was there was like we're not there's no way we're gonna be able to see everything, and I wasn't even gonna attempt to try to see everything. You know, I think after day one, after us getting lost and just kind of wandering around, we said enough of this, no more of that. Let's go to where we know we need to be for certain things or our appointments or meetings. And we kind of stuck to that, but it was a, a lot of fluidity too. Good thing we left the gaps open because man, just going from booth to booth or from meeting to meeting, uh, people are stopping us, asking questions. There's times where we got caught up with people for 40, 45 minutes where we didn't think we were going, you know, it might be somebody in the industry, it might be another detailer, it might be uh, an influencer, somebody that we know, but we had some great conversations that were not on the schedule. Those were the things to me that were the most- uh, Those were definitely the most impactful. Yeah, just it, it's, uh, you know, huge steps for us. As a contributor to the, to the industry, in, in any way, I think anybody would have been happy with the progress that we saw for ourselves during, during the short amount of time that we were there. It was very, very impactful, very insightful, and it very much put things into perspective. We talk about um, having you know the right perspective of your business, where you're going, um, you know, it could be based off of your goals to kind of look back and say, okay, where are we at? Where do we stand? And I think for a long time, we didn't know where we kind of were. Like, we we're kind of like, okay, we're doing something. We enjoy this. We really like this. But I think SEMA just kind of changed all of that for us. And this had nothing to do with the event. It just happened to be the people that the type of folks that are there in the industry. So the people that we respect, people that we, that we, that we just met, people that we've maybe um, looked to as mentors in, in, or peers, the, the response from everything and uh, the support was just through the roof. Humbling, man. Yeah. It was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, and not to mention the 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 folks that would stop us and, and all over the Instagram and just say, hey man, can we take a picture? Can we do this? It, it was 
for us not having a channel compared to some of these other guys in the industry that have, you know, two, three, four, 10, 15, 20 times bigger than ours when it comes to subscriber count and views. And it felt like our impact is a lot bigger than what it, you know, than what the numbers say. And I think for me, that was an eye opener because I'm always kind of, you know, we look at metrics. We're always looking at numbers to kind of see where things stand and lie or where pr improvements can be made. So I think when we look at numbers, we look at opportunity or like, oh, we're, where we could be. But I think it was a good time to, to say, to, to look at ourselves in, in, you know, with feedback that we were getting to say, okay, we're, this is where we are right now. Like enjoy this right now. Like it wasn't like it, at that point, I didn't feel like I needed to do anything else anymore as far as um, I need to be worrying about, uh, I'm not worrying about the channel growth. I'm not worried about the numbers anymore. We're just gonna keep doing what we're doing because there was that much feedback saying, keep having fun yeah just keep yeah, doing just your keep thing like fun. we enjoy watching you guys like it, it and it wasn't the the run of the mill it, yeah, it, felt, it was like it, it, it was felt heartfelt, it, man that like it was real those like conversations were 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 heartfelt and you could you, you could feel the energy that was coming off yeah like people were saying like hey man like thank you for for bringing this stuff up or this is what this is what the the industry needed and this is what we need we need to hear that type of stuff and people that i was kind of i would say almost intimidated by were the ones that were giving us the most positive response so for us that was extremely eye-opening when i look back and i say okay well these people that i've been watching for a long time or been fans of for a long time or people that speak their minds in certain ways and just don't give a fuck about anything else it's harder to succeed in in that space because you obviously you know collaborative efforts and certain things are going to restrict your growth because you do have a certain type of integrity and 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 things you're sticking to that are not going to be compromised so obviously it's harder to to partner with people and to do certain things because you're not as flexible as others but you don't have to be and for us I think we were able to reflect on on our freedom more than anything else because we see guys caught up with other stuff and it's like, how many times did we hear people say, I can't do that? And that's something that's truly non, you can't measure that. No. You don't, you don't know how valuable that is until you have it. Yeah. We talked about this uh, in our corporate jobs, like we wouldn't have the freedom yeah. to do this. And that's knowing like, this is where we need to be. Like it wouldn't have mattered in, yeah. the, in the corporate world. So thank God we're done with that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that that's that an hour, further, no, yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's, it's become something that we, we enjoy doing and we would never have the opportunity to do it under other people. Yes. Or if, even if we partnered with other people that, you know, we've, we've had opportunities in the past. If we were to partner with certain people, things would have to change. And it was kind of us kind of sticking to what we wanted to do and what we're going to continue to do. That is making us special. So for me, that was like, so the motherfucking thing that, <laughs> that we're not compromising, the one thing that we, that, that we just, when we're saying, no, this, that, that is not going to change that ain't off the table. That is the we're, reason why yeah, yeah. we are here. Because we say the shit that we say and we do the <laughs> things that we do. Like, that's the reason that people are loving us. And uh, it truly is, it doesn't, it, it's to the point where it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like uh, a job and now knowing that people are are enjoying it and responding it and responding well towards it it makes you want to do it that much more like it, it's like it's more motivating i think we came back and we were like okay this is they, they want this we got it for them we got plenty of that and this is just the beginning it's just we're, we're just getting into a groove so uh shout out to everybody that has given us the support from uh from from day one and people that continue to give us support you know i think just uh 
you know, one of our biggest supporters, Jamie, even, you know, he, 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 he told us the first time we met him, you guys got to go to SEMA. And the, all the real ones that, that, that support us all told us the same thing. You right. guys got to go to SEMA. And they weren't telling us go to SEMA to be a spectator. They weren't telling us to go to SEMA to, yeah. to look at the they, new products. You they guys said, do what you do. Yeah, they, they, they knew go. you're going to go to you SEMA. Kick it now. Yeah, and they're like, I'm going to be with you guys. I don't, I, I don't give a fuck about nothing else. I'm going to be hanging with you guys. Shout out to Jamie, man. Yeah. I, I had so much so, fun with Jamie, man. Jamie, man, thank J you so much. Like, you, you held it down for us. Jamie, if you guys don't know, J and G Recon, Born Detailers, um, Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City. Um, you know, Jamie was there with us, helping us navigate through things, letting us know exactly what was what, introducing us to people. Um, you know, really, really through through the the steps, getting deeper into the professional side of the industry, like the the other side of the industry. Jamie's really helped us, and so has Shad, because they're looking at things from a different perspective. Oh, Jamie's knowledge, just on, like, uh, he talks about it so casually, too. Like, because oh, he's that, been in the game for oh, so I long. I didn't worry about that. Yeah. And it just, he's just so smooth. Yeah, because it, it's, it nice, it's like nothing to him, you know? And, and great guy. So if you guys are not following the Born Detailers, go follow him, Born Detailers TV. Hey. Shout out to Jamie, Shad. Uh, you know, and just the, the amount of it, man. yeah, and just Always. just the amount of resources that we had felt really good. We knew people that were that were representing companies that are that are you know that are employed with companies. We had companies giving us love. We had um, you know we have influencer friends now that are that are in the industry that are that are doing their thing. Um, you know, shout out to Josh V. You know, uh, and then we also have. You know, the, the Jamies and the people that are deep in the industry, that have been in the industry for such a long time, that are showing us just the way SEMA itself works. That, Because, you, man, we, we had a plan. Like Mike Tyson, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> we got to SEMA, we got punched in the face. Yeah. We still got... We still held it down, yeah. but it was... it was. But now we we need to go in with, with the... With the we had a... Well, we didn't really have a strategy. We had some objectives, which we hit and we exceeded. But I think we need to go in with a little bit more of a strategy next time just to kind of uh, help navigate and, and for time saving sake. I think uh, being on a schedule is not going to be a bad thing for such a big event, especially going forward. Um, knowing where we need to allocate more time or less time um, in certain places. And we helped a lot of people while we were there too. That was that was another part that was surprising to me, was the amount of uh, of respect we get for our opinion when you know when just talking business. You know, there was a few people there that we gave pointers to, whether it be onboarding, whether it be operations, whether it be um, you know even even appearance in things of that nature. Um, it's been even operations. We even got deep into, or we even got deep into uh, some supply chain stuff with with folks. But that was really fun. Yeah. So it's um, we didn't go there saying, "Hey, let's do some consulting." <laughs> but when you have friends in the industry that you want to help and you want to see do well, if we're able to identify something for them, we're definitely going to bring it to their attention and let them know, "Hey, like." Let, let's work on this or let's explore this. Let's check out this. Have you thought of this? You know, so um, it was that. So it's not like everything was just take, take, take from our end. We were definitely giving a lot during the time there. Even people stopping and talking to us, asking us questions about things, what we're, you know, what we're doing and, and how we did this or that and sitting there giving advice to, to people is, uh, that's it. that in itself is very exhausting. I didn't realize how much my voice was shot after day two. So you have, uh, so you're, you just don't have the convention. You got the time after. You, you could tack on an extra four or five hours of the convention day to just the nightlife or what's going on in the evening. 
At least. So, At least. Yeah, and that's where a lot of the... Um, <laughs> Did you say you wish Sibu was like in Palm Springs or something, so everything shuts down at 2 o'clock <laughs> and you have to go home? It was, yeah, Vegas. Yeah. Vegas don't... You guys know Vegas don't Yeah, stop. you guys know Vegas. But so so that was as far as, you know, the, the, the personnel, the experience, the, the, the industry. Um, that's pretty much, you know, how, how we felt about it. It was a great experience. Um, do you have anything else to add on that portion? Not on that portion. Because I want to no. get into. I uh, want to get into the, the other the side. Actual trade the show. Other the side actual side of SEMA, Yeah, the other side of SEMA. <clears throat> One thing that we were having a lot of trouble with, and it wasn't just us, was their mapping. Oh man, the mapping was terrible. Yes, they got an app. Same category. Yes, the app was not even. It, it was just. It, it's not doing it. It's not cutting it. Nobody's getting what they need from the resources that the app is offering. So you you look around to people that are that are completely lost, who are in the same boat as you. Like they're looking at the same sign, scratching their head, and well, it's it's definitely an opportunity that could be fixed. You you're doing all that walking and then you're coming you come to a point where okay i'm tired let me figure out fast where i need to go so and you pull out that map that app map and then you whatever. just get more frustrated you, you just get then the then the fatigue really sets in you're just like <laughs> oh man i'm really tired i gotta look at this yeah and i gotta figure this out yes, like decipher it yeah so we weren't the only ones um that uh that we're feeling that uh, that you just look around at a certain time of the day and you could tell there's a whole bunch of people especially if you walked really far because you're like man now i got to go all the way back that way to get out of this yeah. just to get out we're soon put it this way the second day i had a cart yeah it was uh it was tolling and we work out four days a week so i can imagine the people that don't work out like how they were feeling they how, how the bodies the next day or waking up aching some of these guys i don't know how they do it I, I just don't i simply just don't know physically how they do it because it's exhausting it's a lot you think you're in shape you think you're good and you go to sema go to sema yeah you gotta train oh, it'll test you, you. Train for yeah SEMA. what are you doing we train for that 5k or that nah, <laughs> i SEMA. got sema coming up <laughs> 25 yeah. sema 2025 and we're not big drinkers we don't you know we, we we're not drinking a lot so it's not like we're fatigued and beat down in that sense we're we're just physically it's a lot of movement it's a lot of movement and there's a lot of people so it's not like you're just walking straight ahead you're doing a lot of this and and it's uh nope. won't catch me with the hangover and tired oh no no way you might as well just call it a wrap mm -mm. but uh but yeah so 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 the trade yeah so the the trade show itself that was that was a big one was mapping we lost maybe half a day just kind of lost this and this place is big um we we it was so big we didn't even finish yeah and there was areas where i where we got to and i wasn't it wasn't really my thing so i was you know i was like let's just get through here we just need to get out of here like figure out how to get out but then you get lost trying to get out so it's uh it can become overwhelming there was a point where Sal just said, I got to sit down. There was a couple times where he just said, I have to, I just need to sit. I need to sit and think. And I myself, I'm over here getting content. So I, it, to me, it, <laughs> it, it matters, but it doesn't matter because I, I still have something to occupy. It's not like a total loss. I'm still capturing stuff. But when Sal's trying to navigate the fatigue starts to set in on him so i have to kind of just say okay well let's sit down Gee. Yeah. Gee. yeah so it was uh but you know once you figure out where you need to go and where you want to be in sema i think you're good to go like if you go in especially if you're going four days okay day one i need to hit this hall and be here and i'm good to go uh next year we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna Talked to Josh V before, because my man was in there two days, in and out, got his content, saw his people, shook his hands, did his thing, and was out. And man, he, he had to, and he did his little rounds too at night. He came and had a drink with us. He came in and hung out. And so it's not like he didn't 
do everything he had to do. Oh, he did everything. He did everything. He, he did everything we did, but the way we should have did it. <laughs> so we need to we're, we're gonna get some tips from you, Josh, on on how to get like, in and out. You know out what of people thing. say? How to do a thirty minute detail, Josh? How to get a thirty minute SEMA trip? Yeah, yeah. He he did. He he, he, he was down. He he made us look look bad. Besides the mapping, SEMA itself. I had an expectation of SEMA. And I understand it's a trade show. You know, trade shows, there's a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different yeah. production teams, a lot of different people setting stuff up, a lot of people uh, a lot of people bringing in their own, you know, team from their company to do the to 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 work the show and then you have um, the SEMA staff, security. There's a lot of different things going on. So there's a lot of different people um, for oversight. But overall, my assessment of SEMA was, it's like there's two sides to SEMA. Actually, three sides to SEMA. So you have like the outdoor stuff that's just like a whole production in itself. Because Toyo, was it Toyo Tires? Had their whole tent outside. Mm -hmm. So they have like a little experience going on over there. You got the, the burnout pit. In, and you got stuff going on over there, and you got stands, and then you have you know, you got have the 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 renegade cats, the metal polishers on the cyber trucks and stuff, and then you have the car show, the little alleys and stuff mm -hmm. with the with the cars. So there's a lot going outside. So that's like one portion of it. Then you got the main halls, which are all the big dogs. You know, you got all the big PPF films. The, the big detailing stuff, um, the, you know, and, and each hall has has their, their, their big dogs in the hall. Um, so, you know, one of the halls had Mothers and Maguires in it, and the other hall had, uh, you know, the West Hall, which, which, which was always popping. You know, they had Rupes, PNS is there, Coach Kemi's there, um, I think Car Pro was there. Um, rag company yeah rag company the, 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 that that hall had you know most of the 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 detailing stuff that we were interested in tornador was there um but it was so you have that section and those are usually like the the you know the 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 more Max Shine was in the building. Yeah, Max Shine. So those were uh, those are the more established companies, and uh, they obviously do things to a certain level. There's a certain standard. So that's that's the other part of SEMA, and then you have the 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 like the the back streets of SEMA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make, it's make some money real quick. Yeah, it's almost like they're. It's kind of like okay. This is like the streets. It's kind of like a bad, like, okay, this is, this neighborhood, there's there's litter on the lock ground your, over lock here. Lock your doors <laughs> when we come over here. <laughs> there's litter, there's a little, there's some trash on the ground. Some of these guys, they're, 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 they're uh, you know, their table setups are not Man. the best. There were some dudes that looked like it was a straight up flea market. Yes. Where they had the cardboard boxes and busted open, we peanuts see the, all we, over. We see the little toy, <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> Crawling, remember that little toys at the flea market. Yeah. Anyway. So, so it's kind of like, and then you you walk through these halls, and you you hear guys, hey hey my yeah. man, yeah, hey they're, they're a little more you? aggressive over here. <laughs> hey, 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 hey yeah. let me show you something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they they get real aggressive over yeah. there. Some folks. Hey man, what do you use? What's the POS system you use it? Yeah. Oh, what do you use for data capture? Oh, uh -huh. this and that. It's it gets uh it gets a little active over there to say the least. And um, that's like, you know, Jamie, that's Jamie's area. He loves that stuff because Jamie be <laughs> wheeling and dealing over there, boy. But you have, uh, yeah, some of these, I was surprised by the lack of standards. I would think SEMA would have oversight like, yo, man, at, at least you got to, at minimum, you got to have a tablecloth, something. Because some of these were like they literally just printed out. They, they, like, hey, throw everything in the trunk. <laughs> throw it in the trunk. We gotta go. Hey, we're late. Oh, we gotta, <laughs> That's how that. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was real. You know, just just a uh, eye opener too. But it's like, but you, you see, where 
for me, it was exciting because it's business. Because you're seeing how everybody runs their business. It was business, and in that hall, man, the energy, the vibe was just different. As it in, was hustle. It, it, as in it was a good energy. Yeah, it was hustle. There was definitely, to me, it felt like when you go to New York, and you're in New York or you're in downtown San Francisco or or you know where people are busy, people are people are getting money, people are they're doing something. They're 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 they're, they're there's a there's a hustle in the air. And I like that. So when we were there, you could definitely I, I told Sal, I said, Hey man, that's a little different over here. Yes. I said the energy's a little it sounds like, oh, they're 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 working over uh -huh. here. It was like when you get off of Mexico, when you go to Mexico, and you get off the plane, and you got all them dudes trying to get a. They start putting the bracelets on yes. you real quick. Yeah. That's how, exactly how it was. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, I wish, I wish I would have, uh, I would have uh, spent more time um, talking to those folks. I, I didn't, I didn't speak to very many of the booths there. Yeah. Well, Jamie spent. Jamie had it. Jamie did it for us. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> well, he went around. Well, he was. He's the one next year where it's gonna. You know, where we're gonna. And Jamie doesn't care. We we broadcast it from a couple. He goes, man, just ask. Just, just, just he goes, just tell him we're gonna set up. Just don't even ask him. Just say, man, we're gonna set up. <laughs> and so we we went to a couple. And we're like, Jamie's like, it's cool. We set up. We, <laughs> we're already set up. Yeah, <laughs> all right, cool. Let's do it. But um, but yeah, I think we'll do more of that next year during SEMA because I think people enjoy that. We during our live streams, people jumped on and it was uh, you know, there was there was a there was a good amount of interaction and people want to see what's going on at SEMA. But yeah, that's the the North Hall. So the North Hall is kind of a uh, it's a little bit it's a little different. But overall with SEMA, I just I assumed that they would have a little bit more standards when it came to that. And there's nothing wrong. Like I was, it was, it definitely wasn't a deal breaker because I like it because I'm able to identify kind of where a business is at just by certain things, by certain, um, by certain objective choices, I would say that are made by the business or the business owner. And I understand that if you don't have certain funds or if you can't represent right. a certain way, you just can't. But I also think that there were some people at SEMA that it may not have been the best use of their resources to go to SEMA mm. due to the expense itself. You know? Some of the guys that were there, because you see what businesses are putting forth the effort, even on a small scale, large scale, you see it's, when you're amongst that many, it's easily identifiable who's doing their thing and who's not. So for those that are really hustling and doing it, you wouldn't even be able to tell where they're at in their business. They're gonna look far more ahead than maybe somebody who didn't put forth the same amount of effort. They may have had the same budget, but maybe this person's, they didn't have their staff in uniform or they're just kinda not, not in order or they don't have, they didn't get a tablecloth or they, you know, they spent more money on this instead of this, instead of, you know what I mean? Yeah. There at SEMA, there was a you could you could tell the difference just by appearance. Yeah, like where there were you know where yeah. this you have this group over here, you have this group over here. It's just like okay, just by looking at loan, like this one is yeah. I put my money on this one. Yes, yes, yeah. So that there's uh, and some people don't don't look at it that much. Some people don't value it that much, you know, the appearance and the the look, but it does make a difference and it does matter. It does instill trust to to a consumer. If I'm looking to buy something, you better have a damn good reputation if I'm gonna go to you and you're operating a certain way compared to somebody who's a little bit more put together, let's say. Make sense? Yeah. So and I understand there's completely different ways to operate, but from my assessment there, 
seeing the people that I think some people go to SEMA as a vendor and just assume, oh, I'm in SEMA. I'm at SEMA. So I, I'm, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm at SEMA, so I'm legit now. Or I've made it, or I've, uh, I've, um, or it, or it means something. But it's like if you're there, you better do something with that time, that opportunity that you're there. Especially if you just put, put, put that money in to to sending yourself out there and your team or whatever. That'll be an interesting. Uh number numbers to find out just based off SEMA. Yeah. How many how many people have been to SEMA? Let's talk about businesses. How many businesses have attended SEMA and they're running? Yeah. And you could pretty much get a a clear cut number to see how that business is doing. Yeah. Like this 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 company's been coming here for 15 plus years. Like okay, they're probably they're probably doing all right. And and then you can look at the retention rate. Yeah. And I think also That'll, when you, yeah, yeah, you could definitely, I'm sure you can, there's a lot of data you can be able to capture. Um, but then you have the, the, the companies that are there just to represent. You know, there's some companies that are there just that are there presence. just to represent. You, you know, like, yo, we're, we're, we're going to be here just because we got it in our budget and it, it needs to be, I would be upset, so let's say, if Rupez wasn't there. Right. right. You know, does, does Rupez really have to be there? Probably not. But it's a good idea for them just to show. You know, they represent well. It's Their booth like the was off the hook. It's kind of like the standard now. Like that, that of course. Yeah, they, we got to be here. Yes. Like it's, it's, you know, and, and people look forward to seeing them. So, um, but you have other folks, if... If that's not your intent to be there, because there's other guys that we saw that were there, you see guys, you know, we, we got friends and stuff that are there. They're signing deals. They're making money. They're, 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 they're doing, they're making moves. They're doing what you're supposed to be doing at a trade show. Um, and then you have other people that are just kind of literally like this. Yeah, you kind of want to ask what are you doing here? Yeah. What, what's and, your and business we, here? And you don't realize, you don't, and, and there are some people where we're walking by, I'm like, what, what, what do they even do? And, and they're not sparking curiosity in a good way. It's like, literally, I don't know what you're doing. And a lot of these signage that they have, it'll be of like an automotive part, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like a, like a graph or, or something. It'll show like, I don't know, some stuff that I don't understand. And I'm like, what am I looking at? Is this a transmission part? And so what do you do? Like, what's here? And, and they're just sitting there. And again, everybody has reasons for being there. But um, I think just like any part of any business is you got people that go there with intent to hustle and to do their thing. And then you have people that, that, that do things just kind of half-ass or... I was thinking everything well, was going to be a little bit more on the, on the yo. It's this it's, it's, this is business. Mm. That's what that was my original expectation. So I was a little shocked when, and there wasn't a lot of that, but there was enough to be like, okay, what's what's going on here? And maybe some of these companies, because there was a lot of companies that were international. Maybe they just got a shit ton of money and they're just like, yo, go to SEMA. I tell you what, a couple of those SEMA spots, it looked like. There was one person came down to SEMA and brought a team of 50 and set up like 10 different booths. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I was like, that just that looks the same thing over there. Just rebranded the exact same thing. Oh, like, yeah. no, you, oh it's the same thing. I see, I see the hustle. Yeah, I see what's happening. Uh -huh. It's an industry. Yeah. And in the industry, you have certain manufacturers and you have certain things that are very similar. And I'm sure if you go to like the shoe conventions, I'm sure you probably see the same shoe cleaners all you, different you know places or the same seen, lace companies. I seen the big boy hall, the, the big boy hall where all the big dogs were at. And I did see in the in the hustling hall where it was just a just a branch of the of the big boy hall. He just made oh, yeah. he just made one over here. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, you two, you guys are I connected. see you. I see yeah. you. Yeah. So it's uh it was an exciting uh experience because again, there's business all around us to observe. And I'll also tell you what, 
the biggest indicator of bullshit is also meeting somebody face to face because you'll you'll be able to identify real quick who you want to do business with and who you don't want to do business with. And mm -hmm. we ran across it was almost 50/50 for us. Mm -hmm. You know, meeting some people face to face and I would look at Sal, we we we'd be, you know, be like, mm -mm, that ain't going nowhere. That ain't going nowhere. That that I'll tell you right now. If if either of us got any kind of intuitive feeling like Hey man, I don't even, I don't even want to go down that down that route. Um, well, we met some we met some snakes. Yeah, and there Ooh. there was uh, there was things that uh, maybe one of us was feeling, and then the other one would have to identify. And then you're like, okay, yeah, I got you. I, I know. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I didn't think about that yet. But a lot of risk assessment as far as even who to further communicate with going forward with certain things it became an eye opener in that sense. So business, we already know we don't do business with anybody that we haven't met personally. Like we will make the effort to go fly to see you, to set up a meeting, to we'll, we'll do whatever we have to do on our end to make that happen because we already know that's gonna save us a shit ton of time and a shit ton of, uh, of just problems. So we meet you face to face, we either get this going or not. Like, and we, and we get a good feel for who you are, how business is done. And this was a great way to kind of either continue relationships or kind of cut ties and be like, okay, well, we're gonna limit our communication or our, you know, our- uh, One less thing I gotta do, check. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it was, uh, so that to me was very, very valuable to us, not only in time savings, but also um, keeping the integrity of, of, uh, of what we do. Cause you don't want to get caught up with some people that that you don't need to be caught up with. That could be people real don't realize how tough it can be when you're locked into a business relationship with somebody. That's a whole nother video. Um, we actually had something happen this this past week. Oh, we were we were tied to a little. Yeah, bit. we were tied to, and it wasn't it wasn't a fun situation. They actually reached out to us while we were at SEMA. Hey. Do you know this person individually? And I, we already knew what route we were going down now. And so this is why we're so big and we preach so much about the business relationships you get into. And we don't just do this with, with other companies or with other individuals that are in the industry. This is with our clients. This is why we have a very short client list. And this is why we're referral based only because we don't want to deal with any issues, period. They, we, don't, we don't want to deal with any. We had, we had a, a potential client reach out today and it's almost like you get to a point in your business when you establish things so well and your processes are so well where whether, whether the client books with you or passes, it's a win. It's a win either way. It's like, okay, well, he's going to pass on us because he didn't like the price or he's going to pass on us because he didn't like the things that we were, uh, that, that, that need to be agreed upon. So that's saving us time. People don't realize that in itself has value when they say, okay, well, um, okay, well, I can't do that or I don't want to do that. Because now what has to happen? Now we have to accommodate and do that. And now we're, there's no matter how you play it, you're taking a resource from yourself that you can be putting towards the actual job itself. I don't want to do anything but the job. I don't want to have to do anything else. I want to go in, do what I know I'm good at, knock it out, do it 100% and be done with it. So when we have in our business, when the people say yes, it's always good because we know everything is going to be smooth because all the, all the kinks and everything have already been worked out beforehand. All expectations are set, everything beforehand. So there's no surprises on either end. So you almost have 
You know how you know how smooth it's gonna go. And that's easy. But if they say no, cool. Even better. Because if there was something there that needed to be changed or whatever, now that's putting more work on you. It's like I don't want to do more work. I don't I just don't want to. I'm not at a point in our career where we have to do more work. We don't have to take this client on. So if it's not going to be good for us, we're not going to take it on. If we know it's going to give us trouble, we're not going to take it on. But if we know we're going to enjoy it, we know that the person that we're doing it for is a good person and they're going to, we're not going to have to worry about anything with them and we want to be in a business relationship with them. Okay, cool. Let's go forward with it. And there's always exceptions to make right. too, but you want to be at that point. So at SEMA, we're looking at different different folks from a long-term business relationship standpoint too. Do Is this somebody that we want to get involved with? Is this somebody or is this a company that we want to, we want to uh, invest in or give some sort of a commitment to or even support? I think that's a big one. And um, speaking of support, the, the support system that you can gain at, at SEMA is ridiculous. You, as an individual, as a business, I think that's something that's really important and often not talked about enough because we saw a lot of guys there that were like rooting for each other. And I thought that was really special because you always hear about the industry, people talking about each other. And But I saw a ridiculous amount of support for a lot of different people. Everyone just wanted people, their people to win. Yeah. That was, that, that was a good feeling. Yeah. You, you know, like if we were at the PNS booth and we, and, we, and we ran into Rennie or we ran into Bob or, you know, um, certain people there. You see them doing good, and you're like, man, man, good, good. Like, they're, they're doing really, you know, good for them. Or you go see, it could be another influencer that we know over there doing their thing, making a relationship with them. Man, man, good for them. You know, Serrano doing his thing. Like, everybody was loving Serrano sure. over there. And, and he was, uh, shout out to Serrano. But, um, but Carlos, it was his first time, and he took advantage of his time there yeah, we got to hang out with carlos, carlos yeah a good carlos dude, really carlos, good really really good guy well who you see on camera the exact same person you see in real life man yeah. he's just like a cousin great great guy great guy it felt like it, it felt like a lot of the guys that we met we knew for a long time yeah we were extremely yeah. comfortable it's with like there's someone that the <laughs> friend or family member was like hey, someone, yeah. he, he's like so and so and jamie was close to a lot of guys too so that kind of helped us you know yeah. feel even more comfortable um, so it was, uh, it was, it, it felt good to see the support for one another within the industry and seeing guys, um, that you, that, you know, working for certain companies or we've been in the industry long enough to where, you know, we've taken trainings here or there, or we've done things where maybe, they were having an industry day somewhere, so somebody was there representing Rupez, or somebody was there representing um, uh, Coach Kemi, or somebody was there representing another brand, and we were able to see them doing their thing at work, and it's, you know, they're happy to see you too. So it's, uh, but when, when, when the support is there, I think it's, it's, it's a really powerful thing for the industry because there's the, because, because when everybody's supportive like that, the industry can only go one way. It's very unlikely that it's gonna dip downward or, you know, there, there was, I think there was people there that kind of still do have a, that, that look of, okay, my competition type of stuff. But I think the ones that we gravitate towards more are the ones that look past that. It's like, Nah, it ain't competition because it's all good for the industry. Right. This industry is still growing. There's a lot of potential for everybody, and everybody could make money. It's when you're not scared of other people making money. It's always a good thing, you know. We're never concerned about other people. We don't care what other people are doing, um, you know. Especially if it's in our 
you know, expertise, we're not concerned with the other people because we know what we're doing. It's not like, oh, they're going to be our competition. It's like, no, they, they, it's not competition like that. You know, and uh, PNS was the first people I've seen talk about that openly. When Bob made that statement, hey, man, it doesn't matter what you're using. It's all good for the industry. As long as you're using something, like you're, you're promoting the industry. And as long as you're promoting the industry in a good way, it, it's doing good for all of us. You know, so it's uh, to see that type of attitude is really cool. And uh, it's, you know, you still have the guys that, 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 that conduct business a whole different way that that are just like no i don't i don't mess with them but i don't want this i don't eat where it's almost like a paranoid mm -hmm. type of you know like, oh, i don't want nobody stealing my stuff or this or you know whatever the reasons are but it's kind of uh it's almost it's almost it's like nobody's really caring that much about you <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> It's like we all think everybody's like so far up in everybody's business. Like most people are worried about the shit they got to do. Right. They're not that into you that much. Like, so why are you tripping? Um, but what, what else you got from SEMA, man? What man, uh, SEMA, PPF is in the building. Oh, yeah. Man, every, every other booth was a PPF booth, man. Yeah. I, and I didn't, couldn't tell the difference, but that didn't stop. Uh, there were people they were racing who could do it the fastest. I mean, it was and they very had a crowd almost very the whole entertaining <laughs> if you like that stuff. Yeah, but uh, if you want to get into the PPF game, SEMA, if yeah. you're thinking about it, you go ask all the questions you want. There. Oh, yeah, they'll yeah. answer it all. Yeah, they had all the big ones, they had Expel, 3M, they had, they had uh, all of them were there. The team you, the team you won, yeah, they, <laughs> they had, had the those there for the cheap ones. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you go to the North Hall, you get some more budget-friendly yes. joints. Yes. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, the audio area the audio was, 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 wild. was yeah, nice. Yeah, I wish I could have spent more time there. Yeah. That's that, for that sure. was that, cool. That, that would have really been cool. just entertaining just to just to get it and see all the old, the Pioneer. Yeah. yeah Wofford it, Fosgate. Yeah, it, that, that, was, uh, that was a part that I didn't think I would be that excited but just when you're walking through there you you feel the bass and, yeah you know as soon as you walk into that hall you usually hear like a heavy bass you're like oh okay what, what's going on over here and then you see the big kenwood yes. up top so you're like the pioneer old, you're like okay that brought back some memories yeah so it was uh that was really cool that that made me feel that was the closest i felt to like uh somebody there just to see cool shit yes yeah, because I, I we weren't there to I see. Would, yeah, I wouldn't mind being entertained. Yeah, staying there. Another area we didn't get to see that I would probably want to see next year is like the wheels. We didn't get to look at the wheels. We went through certain certain areas where we saw a lot of engines and high performance parts, but not like the wheels and tires. I think that area because you know they have all the cars there too, so you know they got some sitting nice on the mm -hmm. rims, like looking stuff that we could appreciate. So I'm excited next year to make to make a point of going there. But also some of these halls have some of the 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 builders too. Like I didn't realize some of you know I, I don't follow a lot of builders, but some of my favorite builders were actually there, like tearing apart cars and like doing installations and stuff. So that's definitely something. There's a lot of people that that were there for that. Yeah. So there's definitely some stuff I need to. Go I, and I didn't even think about that part of it, uh, as far as the things I wanted to see. But like for me as a spectator, that that to me is is cool because that's that's kind of like an art form, especially when they're doing it improvised, uh, which some of my favorites do. But uh, but we saw some cool people. Um, we saw I saw Larry from Ammo, who. Mm -hmm has a huge youtube channel i learned i learned i've learned a lot from controversial figure in the industry for whatever reasons everybody likes and dislikes people whatever but i learned a lot from him i like him i think he does shit um you know and i'm not talking about his detail work um i think his detail work is good too but um i think he does shit the right way the way that he does that he does top notch shit like he, you know he, he you could tell He's one that cares about the things that he does and how he does them. So 
Um, Magnus Walker was there. Um, you know the big the you know he 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 now designs and works you know in the art space and design world and he's a big collector of art and Porsches and he's just you know big enthusiast and collector like really big in the Porsche game um had the opportunity to to see him and uh yeah then you, then you got your friends it's always a good time to hang out with your friends it, it's uh to see how each other's doing like there wasn't a lot of detailing talk no thank god yeah i love that yeah there wasn't a lot of detailing talk and i really enjoyed that because it was more of our space like the things that we because usually we're talking we have to speak in 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 the other language you know we're consulting we always have to revert everything into detailing this way it was more everything was geared towards strictly business operations uh logistics and just fun too yeah I, mean, it, I like the fun talk just just talking about life yeah that was good that yeah. was just good you get a lot of wisdom you get a you get a, a a grasp for who people are but when you meet them in person like you you immediately like no okay this is one of us this is there's just a feeling this is our tribe these the mm -hmm. this this person gets it i knew they got it and where there's a friendship that's almost immediate um and you know for instance uh christian i'm bio bombs no surprise that we that we clicked the way that we clicked and it was it was a real one man yeah and i think we we bur we both learned a lot from each other and where our businesses are we got a better understanding of where each other's businesses are, what we've gone through, where we're going. And I think one thing in common that we have a lot with a lot of these guys, um, even, you know, and it, it, it's not necessarily just a, 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 a detailer slash, um, you know, um, company owner, you know, bio bombs, but uh, even Josh V, you know, who's, influencer and a detailer and he has retail store also so two completely different types of 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 businesses and business models but the one thing that we're noticing with a lot of the groups that we that we associate with is they all have an extreme amount of support like good fucking people next to them you know like like uh like old Ryan with Josh. We don't even know Ryan, but from what we know about Ryan, we'll see you see him next year, Ryan. But from what we know of Ryan, it's like Ryan is like a real one. Yeah. A real one. And like bio bombs, you know, Matt was there with bio bombs, and we're like, Matt, like, Matt knows his shit. Like, Matt is, he's sharp. He understands what, like, he's a true, like, both of them. Like Ryan for, for Josh, he's an asset to them. Like that's a fucking value. Matt to, to, to Christian, Christian, and I know you already know this, but your boy's holding it down. You know, like mm. that, that is invaluable. That's like what Sal was to me. And that's why he's a part and that's why he's not leaving. And we talk about it all, well, not all the time, but that's the beginning of culture. Once you had, once you establish that, like you now, it's now like, you're holding expectation. Yes, that's what the expectation should always be. Yeah, uh, that's what we talked about. Hire employees. We don't ever hire employees. Yeah, we're not trying. You hire employees. You you get employee things. You get employee problems. Like we're not trying to hire employees. We're trying to hire. We're not hiring anybody. We we we're building the team. We're building the culture. Anybody can fit that culture. That's what we're that's what we're bringing yeah. them in. That's far more important than 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 hiring somebody that has because most of the things in business are teachable right there's a few things that are not teachable but if somebody embodies the culture that you want in your business it's going to alleviate so many issues and you already know i can rely on this person there's certain values that are there there's certain there's certain ethics that are that are there that don't need to be taught instilled or ingrained in and stupid rules don't yes. need to be fucking yes. made because yes. this person does comprehend let's just talk about comprehension 
because comprehension is very, very underrated. Some people just don't fucking get it. Well, like, comprehend, y y y and that's what in the corporate world you can't say that. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Can't, you just yeah. you can't say this person just yeah. doesn't get it. It's yeah. not going to work. Yeah. You can't do it. But for all of you who have your businesses, you can, <laughs> you can, you can say, look, they just don't got it. They're, I don't think they're ever going to have it. And if you're not willing to invest the time to to even see if they're going to. So just to invest the time and the work and the resources to try to figure out if they're ever going to get it. That's that's kind of like a leap of faith that you got to take as as an operator. Do I even want to invest that time? Wishful thinking is a business killer. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like hiring somebody. Basically, it's like hiring somebody for the wrong reasons. When you hire somebody for the wrong reasons, you end up having to teach more. And when you have to teach more, it's just bigger risk all around. Oh, you, you, you say when well, you have to make stupid rules. Yeah. So when you make stupid rules, you make stupid rules for, who, for who, what type of people? For the stupid incompetent people. people. For stupid people. Yeah. I, yeah. was, I was going somewhere with that, but <laughs> that's, I think that's said enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You shouldn't have to. You you shouldn't have to have a a a, a, a posted sign in the bathroom. Wash your hands, employees. Wash your hands. <laughs> your employees should know to wash his hands. Don't drive off with the gas station. Yeah. With the gas station hose. Yeah. So those are the, all those are made for stupid people. You know, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but wash your hands. <laughs> but, uh, so... You have, if you have stupid rules, yeah. I'll tell you who you have yeah. working for you. Yeah, so, so, so I think we... <laughs> you make stupid rules, I'll tell you who's hiring them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have, uh, so we identified that a lot of these, these guys that have a lot of success in, in their businesses or on an individual basis, they have an extreme amount of support or at least have a solid number one holding it down for them. You know, like for instance, like Shad and Jamie, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they're, they are, and I think you can see it from, from even our last, I think it was a good example, our last uh, uh, podcast with uh, Jamie and Shad from, uh, you know, from SEMA, where, we're during the video I, I watch it, I'm like, we're encouraging one another there. Like we're we're celebrating each other's successes and and that's something I don't think is done enough. So ride with us. You wanna you wanna yeah, celebrate some yeah. wins? <laughs> yeah, cause 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 we all have wins around us and it's uh when when you're you know, when you're showing people like a perspective, it, you you could add that to the list of questions that I'm at that that we ask to when we get to know people is that's one question that I'm finding out that you got to identify is asking them who's your number one. Yeah, and then some guys just like that, boom. Yeah, and other guys are just like, I I don't have one. It's like okay, that's why you got to we got to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, when, when, whenever somebody's overwhelmed. The most impactful, though, what I've seen is when they say they're number one, they, they know who the number one, and they're not utilizing the number one. And then it's just like, oh, well, yeah. there, there it is right there. And then yeah. the light bulb goes off. And that's always yeah. gratifying yeah. and humbling in itself, too. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, and I think some of it, too, is, is resource management. They don't know how to mm -hmm. utilize the that's number a, one of the two expertise and, right there in itself and man. then another part of that is you know you have trust that goes along with that too it's like yo you're telling me this is somebody that you've known for this amount of time who's never been late who doesn't do this but you don't trust them with the schedule so it's kind of trust is empowerment especially if it's the right person there's certain things that we're at the point in our business where it's no longer about trust it's about what's going to be fitting more for one for one another okay this is going to be more fitting for sal this is going to be more fitting for for me you know like uh like the personnel the contacts and communications when it comes to business relationships that's probably more suited for sal to take care of the scheduling to take care of all of that stuff i'll be there to do this portion of it but 
Sal's going to be more of the people person type of deal. That's he works better in that space. He's obviously more likable. And these are these are things that by most people would be like, oh, how, how are you going to say he's more likable? Like for me, it, I'm not looking at that as a disadvantage for me. I'm looking at that like we got it's not that I'm unlikable, but we got somebody that's really likable. Why, why am I going to try to take that shine and, and try to step into that role when I already know there's somebody that's suited better for it? Same thing with me. Like if there's some sounds like, hey, brother, I need you to you, this. This was for you. You you got you hold this one down. So there's there's a you got to find your number one. And, and that can take you to a whole nother place. Um, you know, like with the bio bombs. I saw Matt just doing his thing, like literally holding Man. it down. Like, like if, if, if Matt, if, if, you know, I don't know if Christian knows this, he probably does, but Matt could have held down that, that counter, you know, like he, he, he's smart enough and witty enough to where if he didn't know what it was, my man's going to grab the bar, start reading up on it and, and, and figure it out. If my man Christian wasn't over, all over YouTube, you could say Matt was Christian. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, the, that's, that's an identity. That's, uh, that was definitely something I de that we identified in, in a lot of the businesses that we see that are doing really well is they all have that, that ridiculous amount of support from, from people. And it, and it doesn't have to be anybody even necessarily in the business with them. It could just be somebody from the outside. That's just like, yo man, I want to be down. Whatever you guys need, I'm here, and uh, and the, on the social media end too, man. The the amount of guys that were supporting each other is is wild on that end. You know, like we had we had the born detailers come in with us. We had Josh V come in with us. We had the whole Thor team. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know. So the, the, all all of that um, all of that media and all of that. Uh, you know, Pan, Pan the organizer, you know, was was really generous with his time. And, and Pan. Yeah. So um, money making Pan. So we have all these uh, all these great guys that are good at what they do. And it's just it's just knowledge and fun. And and we're not really talking too much about those specific things. We're talking about things in general. I think SEMA cut through a lot of the fat of stuff, especially with the guys that that we really wanted to talk to that were at a level where we want to be. And when we asked for the advice, I think they just like they, they made it as as black and white, as as clear as you can possibly make it. And that for us kind of let us know, OK, we're on the right path. And for me, that in itself was reassuring because how how you can only do so much being 70% sure because you're like, well, what if I'm going down the wrong road? Then I'm going to have to turn all the way back down. But now knowing that we're on the right path, it's just we're not fucking around. One of the the one of the most humbling, the, the most humbling thing that happened to, was that SEMA when I, I'm not going to say the name, I just want to keep it. Um, when I had that conversation with my other man from Philly, um, what he said was just truly humbling, man. Where he just, he said, hey, don't take this in any disrespectful way. I'm very, very proud of you guys. And I was just like, I knew exactly what he was, what he was talking about. It, yeah. Those are the type of men I've been associated with my whole life. So when he said that, man, it was just like, man, thank you. Like, yeah. Man. yeah. When, you, when you see people giving it up to you who normally don't really give it up to, to, to people like that or or they just have a certain stature to themselves yeah. and they have a super high standard. Like my man ain't going around telling people. Yeah, telling people exactly. This shit, you know yes. I mean? So it's like, whoa. So that's you. when we knew, OK, this is like yeah. we're, we're, we're doing this. We're doing this right. We're doing this the way that uh, that's getting a response. And, and now it has meaning to us. So I think now going forward, if you thought we didn't give a fuck before, oh, we really don't. We really like like nobody's safe. Nobody's <laughs> safe. Oh yeah, the unboxings are gonna get a lot, a lot. So so send us some stuff. I dare you. 
anybody. Um, we need to get real critical. <laughs> We're gonna get real critical around here. We ain't getting nothing now. Around this part, around nothing. these parts. Hey, it's a win-win. Yeah. You don't get nothing. Fuck it. <laughs> Whatever. We don't need nothing. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man. SEMA wrap up. Uh, any shout outs you want to give? Bio bombs. The whole Thor team. Um, PNS, thank you, PNS, for letting us hold it down. Coach Kemi, the whole Coach Kemi team, man, just great Game fucking over, guys, man. man. Like Game they got, over. man, they Game over. they. Sorry, cheapos. They're on a different, <laughs> yeah, they're on a different level, man. They're on a different level, and uh, thank you guys for everything. Um, so yeah, Casey, Diego, Andrew, the whole team, Hunter, Culture. Justin. Culture. Yeah, talk about crazy culture, and you know, uh, we're ha we're happy to have any association with that nice. because that's all about what we try to talk about and what we embody, um, you know, in in details in ourselves. But um, anybody else you want to give shouts out to Rupez? Of course, all the big the guys. Rupez hey, hey. teams. PNS was in the building. Well, I want to say about PNS, what I like about them since I've been on board. And sees with PNS, when all the stuff, all this hype stuff is coming out, PNS is just like this way in the background. Oh yeah, they do. They and do. They, and then they come out and be like, boom. Yeah. Defender. Like all well, the it's, all the yeah. all the ceiling stuff was coming I out. Think, and I PNS think, was in the back. And I, know, and I know what you're doing, PNS. Hit him with hit him with defender. I, That's the I, best. And I know what you're doing, PNS. It came just, out with the ceramic coat, and I was like, man, this ceramic coat sucks, man. It's hard to put on. Hit him with the stout. Hit him with the stout. Like, hold on, we got easy uh -huh. work. Easy uh -huh. work. The yeah. all, all the window cleaner. Everyone talking about the window cleaner. Oh, they got this the finisher. This window cleaner. This window cleaner's whack. Or you know, Bill Hammer. Traces. Bill Hammer. That's yeah. the one to go to. PNS. We got a finisher all. now. Uh huh. Yep. Window that, cleaner finisher. Yeah. That's, that's, if that's it went not, to rehab. <laughs> you oh, all, these, rehab. All, all these all these all these one steps. All these one. Man, here, let me hit him with this rehab. <laughs> nah, man, that's Dave, man. Yeah, that's Dave dope, over there, man. Man. Dave over there in the lab mixing it up. <laughs> like he's, and I know that's well. The, the, I, the way I look at it is, it's not always the first one that right. that 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 does it and that hits a home run. That first one is is like, like AOL. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, then you got Google. And you have you know you have all these different types of uh, you know search engines that, that that laid the foundation, but didn't necessarily do it great. MySpace. But it's yeah, the second one that comes through and and really gets it right because they learn from all the mistakes of the yeah. first one. PNS just kind of like with the SIO two junk, they were kind of like, well, none of them are doing it right yet. Let's 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 let this wave go by, <laughs> and then let's go to the lab, Boom. figure it out, and hit them with it. You know, which if you're sleeping on Defender, go get it. I'll link it in the description. But yeah, they do that with everything, and I'm starting to kind of like them more for that because they're not rushing to the market to make some trash just to keep up with the times. They're they're more concerned with making it actually do well. They they working on some tire shine probably because that's oh yes yeah. and I all these tire shines that can step in their game. Well, watch they PNS, sure like, are. Watch watch they sure are. You, you heard it first. Uh huh. Look, PNS. Seema two twenty twenty five. Oh oh oh, Dave's probably like <laughs> did I get tire shine. <laughs> He's probably already working. Huh? He's already working on it. He's like I got you. I got you. So uh, so yeah. That's uh, it. That's our version recap of SEMA. Thank you, everybody, for all your support at SEMA. It was a pleasure meeting all of you in person. And, uh, man, you guys were all great. I'll be happy to see you guys in 2025. Mm -hmm. So that's it.